This is my geometry course. Today we're going to continue to learn the fundamentals of geometry. If you haven't done the homework completely and correctly from last class, do that homework before watching this video. Remember that homework is not an option or a suggestion. Uh, it's a requirement. If you don't do that homework, it's a 100% guarantee you're going to learn absolutely nothing in this entire course. So the homework needs to be complete, neat, correct, and in order in a binder. Now in the previous class we focused on segments. Today we're going to focus on angles. An angle is two rays with a common endpoint. And the purpose of an angle is to indicate a measure of rotation. So this arc here kind of represents that rotation. If you're looking straight forward and you rotate your head, you can see that uh, the angle of rotation can be can be shown with two rays. Now, the extent of the rotation is called the measure of the angle. And we use the degree for units when uh, looking at the extent of the rotation. So this, uh, this angle measure would be about uh, maybe about 45 degrees. Now a complete rotation is defined to be 360 degrees. If you're looking forward and then you turn around all the way until you are pointing in the same direction you started, that's considered to be a 360 degree rotation. But why is that? Why is it that one rotation is considered to be 360 degrees? We could choose any number. We could choose 100 degrees or 1,000 degrees. Why three, 360? Well, most likely, it has to do with the number of days it takes for the Earth to complete an orbit around the sun. Now, you might say, well, wait a second, it takes 365 days to complete an orbit around the sun, for the, for, for the Earth to go around the sun. Well, it's possible that in the past, the Earth's uh, orbit was uh, uh, faster, uh, but uh, we don't really know. The truth is nobody really knows where 360 came from, but that's probably uh, the origins of it. So we can notate an angle in various ways. You see this notation here. We use this symbol to show that it's an angle. And you see we have three letters. So here's an example of notation we use for an angle. And you see that the common endpoint of the rays is, in, is at the center. That's the important thing. That, that common endpoint has to be the center letter. If you write angle ABC, that notation does not represent this angle. That's improper notation. C has to be in the middle. Here's a different way to, to write the angle, but again, C is still in the middle. As long as C is in the middle, and these two other letters are on the rays, then uh, that's proper notation. In some cases, we can actually write just one letter, the, the letter of the, the, uh, that's the end point, but there is some ambiguity that comes in in that situation. Now, in the previous classes, we talked about this notation for segments. This uh, describes the overall idea of a segment, its shape and its size. That's what that notation means, but if we want to just talk about the length, we use this notation without a mark. That's just a number. AB is just a number, but AB with a mark describes the overall shape and the idea of the segment. Well, for angles, this notation is used to describe, again, the idea of the angle, its shape, its measure, everything together. But if you want to uh, notate just the measure of the angle, which is a number, you write an M in front of that notation. This is just 45 degrees. That's just a number. Whereas, again, uh, this symbol, that describes the whole concept of the angle. Now, 
there's multiple ways you can write uh, the measure of an angle. Again, you can switch those letters around. The only difference, again, is that we're writing an M, which means measure, measure of the angle. But you can also write a Greek letter. Greek letters are sometimes used, well, often they're used to represent uh, the measure of an angle. Uh, theta, this is called theta. You don't really have to worry about the name right now, but we use alpha, beta, a lot of different uh, Greek uh, letters. Now, it's important to know that this point here is called the vertex of the angle. So the common endpoint of the rays of the angle is called the vertex of the angle. We give it a fancy name. And the rays of the angle are called the sides. So it's just different words we use to describe the parts of the angle. So that's the basics when it comes to angles. Let's uh, do some practice problems. So it says here, write three names for the angle below. So we're going to do this one together. So we can write, and we're talking about this angle down here, we can write angle EHC, or we can write angle CHE. As long as the H, the common endpoint of the rays, is in the middle. And again, we call H the vertex of the angle. So as long as that ver that vertex point it is uh, the letters in the middle, then it's going to be correct. And then we can also say angle H. But again, there is some ambiguity we're going to talk about later with that. All right, so that's part one. Now it says write four names for the measure of the angle. So now we're talking about the measure of the angle. This is actually a number. And this, this number would probably be around, um, I don't know, maybe 28 degrees it looks like that angle is. Um, we, we can write the same notation here, but we're just going to write M in front, which means measure of angle EHC measure of angle CHE, measure of angle H. So these represent the actual uh, number, whatever it is. It looks like about 20 degrees. And we can also write a Greek letter. And we already have this Greek letter here, so we can write theta. But again, sometimes you'll see alpha, sometimes you'll see beta. Don't worry about remembering those now. So now we're going to identify its sides and vertex. So the vertex is easy. The vertex is just H. And the sides, well, let, me, uh, let me label that. Vertex is H. And sides, the sides are the rays. So I'm going to write H, E with an arrow and make sure the the arrow is on top of the E you don't want it to be going in the wrong direction and then we have H C sorry about the writing there so those are the sides they are the rays okay so I want you to uh, try number two and you can use the page at the left to help you when you come back we'll do it together all right, we're back. OK, so we're going to write three names for the angles. So we can write angle ABC, angle CBA, and we can say angle B. The most important thing is that B is in the center of these letters. If it's not in the center, then that means it's incorrect. Um, so those are the possible names we can come up with. Now let's write the uh, names for the for the angle measures, the actual the actual measure of the angle, which looks to be about um, maybe 120 degrees, 130 degrees. So the measure of angle ABC is one way to notate that. Measure of angle CBA 
and measure of angle B. Those are three different ways. And then we can also say W. Now that's a, uh, a letter that looks familiar. When we write a capital W in English, it looks like this. When we write a lowercase, it looks like this. But if you write a stylized version of that, it's called omega. And that's a, that's a Greek letter. I know that's kind of confusing, but uh, that's actually a Greek letter, omega. Again, you don't have to worry about uh, remembering those Greek letters right now. Okay, so now we're going to identify its vertex. And I don't have room really to write here, so I'm just going to identify that. That's B, and then the rays, BA, and BC are the sides. And make sure the arrow is on top of the A, and the arrow is on top of the C. So if you got that one right, excellent. And if you uh, did something wrong, that's okay. You can just go back and figure out what you did wrong. All right, so now we are going to classify angles. We're going to start coming up with some names of all the different types of angles that you're going to see. A right angle is an angle whose measure is 90 degrees. So remember, a complete rotation is 360. But you can see that this is a fourth of a complete rotation. If you rotate double that, then then you're, uh, it's 180 degrees. If you rotate three times that, it's 270. And four times that would be 360. So this is a fourth of a rotation. If you're, if you're going uh, east, headed east, and then you turn directly north, that's a 90 degree angle measure. And so that's represented by this box. Whenever you see a box, that means that the measure of that angle is 90 degrees. And it's, it's given a special name. It's called a right angle. A right angle is an angle whose measure is 90 degrees. A straight angle is an angle that's created when you're moving, for example, east, and then you turn around and go the exact opposite direction, west. If you do that, you see that the rays that are created are going in the opposite direction, and they, are, they, they make a line. In that case, that angle measure, the measure of that angle is 180 degrees. And why is that? Well, because again, a full rotation is 360. This is half of a rotation. Half of three, 360 is 180. If you go another 180, you get to 360. So we're just doing basic arithmetic here. Um, this may be easy for a lot of students, but some students get kind of confused about what you know what these arcs are. And, but this green arc just represents the 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 the, the angle and its measure. So we call that a straight angle because, as you can see, the rays make a straight line. It has a special name. We call it a straight angle. Now, an acute angle is an angle whose measure is less than 90 degrees. So the, the measure of this angle, for example, would be about uh, maybe 30 degrees. That's an acute angle. An obtuse angle is an angle whose measure is between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. So the angle measure here would probably be about 130 or 140 degrees around there. So it's between 90 and 180. We call it an obtuse angle. And a reflex angle is an angle whose measure is between 180 and 360. For example, this angle measure would be about maybe uh, 200 and, uh, 215 degrees, somewhere around there. And uh, this is a complete rotation angle. That just means we're going all the way around until we get to uh, where we started. That's 360 degrees. So if you're moving on your bicycle and you jump up in the air and go all the way around until you're facing where you started, that's a 360-degree rotation. I don't recommend doing that on your, on your bicycle. When I was a kid, I tried to do it, but that's probably not a good idea. Thankfully, I, I never fell, but... Okay, so I want you to uh, take a picture with your phone of the, 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 uh, this page here, or take a screenshot. You're going to need this information in front of us. Or maybe you can just uh, catch on as uh, we work 
on number three. Maybe you can, uh, if you have a good memory, we're going to do these problems together, and I'm going to give you a, a set to do on your own. So, uh, so this problem says classify the angles with the following measures. So here's an angle measure down here, 190 degrees. If its measure is 190 degrees, what kind of angle is it? Well, it's a reflex angle. Remember, reflex angles are angles whose measures are between uh, 180 and 360. Now this is a special angle. That's a straight angle. Straight angles have uh, measures that are exactly 180 degrees. This is a, an obtuse angle. Obtuse angles have measures that are between 90 and 180. This is a special angle that's called a right angle. Right angles have measures that are exactly 90 degrees. This is an acute angle. Their, their measures are less than 90 degrees. And this is another reflex angle. Their measures are between 180 and 360. So again, this stuff may seem kind of easy, but we're just kind of getting used to the basic ideas of, of, of angles. If you're kind of bored with this stuff, then I'm sorry about that, but this is the beginning of geometry, so we got to start with the basics. And if you're wondering how are you going to remember all this stuff, well, you don't have to worry about that now. You're going to uh, remember this stuff as we go along and you do the homework and, and uh, study for tests and so on and so forth. Okay, it says here, use the illustration to classify each angle below. Um, and it says, assume that none of these are reflex angles. We're going to talk about what that means as we go along here. So let's try to classify this angle ABD. So let's look at that angle on the picture. So angle ABD is the angle with these green rays. We want to classify that. Is it acute, obtuse, a straight angle, a right angle, um, reflex, a complete rotation angle? What is that? Well, a 90 degree angle is an angle that looks like this. That's, that's 90 degrees. It's a fourth of a complete rotation. So you can see that the green angle is a little bigger than that. The green angle looks like it's, if, you, if that yellow represents the, the, uh, the angle, it looks like it's about maybe 120, somewhere around there. So that is going to be an obtuse angle. Obtuse angles are angles whose measures are between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Now, I want to mention something very important. Let's draw those rays again. It says up here, assume that none of these are reflex angles. What that means is we're classifying this angle here. We're not classifying this reflex angle back here. So the answers are not going to be reflex angles. So there's some ambiguity involved with that. So we're talking about the, the angles that are less than or equal to 180 degrees. All right, so let's try the next problem here. It says classify angle ABC. So let's look at angle ABC. Well, you can see that makes a straight line. And the degree measure is 180. If you were to measure the... the uh, indicate the, the measure of the degree that's 180 degrees. So that is a straight angle. All right, now let's move to angle CBD. This is angle CBD here. And again, we're assuming that there's no uh, reflex. We're assuming that the angles that we're dealing with are not uh, uh, reflex angles. So we're not considering this angle here. Let's classify this angle. What type of angle is that? Well, again, 90 degrees would be here, roughly that arc there. So looks like this angle measure is less than uh, 90 degrees. So that's going to be an acute angle. 
And now let's look at angle CBE. Angle CBE is this angle. And that measure looks like it's bigger than 90 degrees. So that's going to be uh, an obtuse angle. Okay, so you're going to get a chance to do some of these problems as we go along here. Uh, but for now, again, we're going to uh, do these together. So now it says, label each angle below as acute, obtuse, right, straight, reflex, or complete rotation. So this is a straight angle because it makes a straight line. So I'm going to write straight. Now this angle has a box, so that means it's a right angle. Remember that box signifies that it's a right angle, which means its measure is 90 degrees. This angle here, and again, it doesn't say that we're assuming that there's no reflex angles. This is actually, uh, the arc is on this outside part, so that means it's a reflex angle. If the arc were uh, on the inside, then it would be an obtuse angle. But since it's on the outside, it's actually a reflex angle. Again, a reflex angle is an angle whose measure is between 180 and uh, 360. And here we have um, another reflex angle. Looks like that angle would be about uh, 335, maybe, degrees. So that's between 180 and 360, so that's a reflex angle. Okay, I think we have one more of these problems to do before you try some on your own. It says classify angle ABC with these points here. So let's go ahead and draw those points. So A is uh, 1 comma 2, so that's there. B is negative 1, 0, so that's there and C is negative 4, 0. So that's there. Um, so I'm going to write the letters. Whoops, that's not the right letter designations. That's B and that's C. So let's double check that we got those coordinates right. Looks like we did. So now we're going to connect the dots and make our angle. And it says, assume that we're not talking about a reflex angle. So we're not considering this angle out here. So what angle are we talking about? This one here, right? Is that an acute angle, an obtuse angle, uh, a straight angle, a right angle? What do you think? Well, 90 degrees would look like a, a 90 degree angle would be this. So it's bigger than 90 degrees, the arc. So uh, its angle measure is bigger than 90, so that's going to be an obtuse angle. So we can say obtuse. OK, so these are just some uh, types of problems that you're going to get. So now it's time for you to try. I want you to try number seven. If you get stuck on some of these problems, that's OK. Uh, and even if you think these problems are really, really easy, I want you to do them anyway. So try number seven. And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. This is an acute angle. This is uh, an obtuse angle. This is a reflex angle and a straight angle. So less than 90 degrees, it's between 90 and 180. 
It's between 180 and 360, and it's exactly 180. That's how you know. This is exactly 90, so it's a right angle. And this is less than 90, so that's an acute angle. So if you got those answers, good. If you didn't, that's okay. Just figure out what mistake you made. Again, you can take a picture of these uh, these, pa these pages to help you. So try number eight, and uh, when you come back, we'll do it together. Okay, we're back. So angle ABE is, uh, that's this angle here. Um, now again, we're, we're supposed to assume that there's no reflex angle, so we're not talking about this angle here. That's an angle between 180 and 360. So we're talking about this angle. Is that angle acute or is it obtuse? Or is it straight or is it a 90 degree angle? Well, it looks like the angle measure would be about uh, 30 degrees. So that's going to be an acute angle because it's less than 90 degrees. And angle CDE, that's this angle here. And you can see we have that box there. That box means that it's a 90 degree angle. So that's going to be a right angle. And this angle here is uh, CAB, angle CAB. That looks like its measure is going to be about maybe 100 degrees. So it's a little bit bigger than 90 degrees. So that's going to be an obtuse angle. And angle DEB. That's going to be this angle here. And again, we're assuming that we're not talking about this reflex angle. Is this angle going to be acute, obtuse, a right angle, or a straight angle? Uh, it's not going to be a complete rotation angle, obviously. Well, that's going to be, uh, that, that angle measure looks like it's about 130 maybe degrees. So that's going to be... Um, an obtuse angle. So now angle DCE. DCE would be this angle here. Is that acute, obtuse, straight, or right angle? Well, it looks like that angle measure is going to be about maybe about 45 degrees. So that's going to be an acute angle because its measure is less than 90 degrees. And what about angle EDA? Angle EDA is this angle here. Now we know that we have a box over here. You see this little box. The question obviously is what is this angle? Well, we know the angle from here to here, and we're going to talk about this later on in the class. This, uh, if you were to continue this green ray rotating down here, you would get a, a straight angle. That's 180 degrees. We know that this angle here is 90, so this angle must be 90 also. Um, because again, if you rotate, so you have a straight angle, it's a, uh, 180 degrees, but this angle here is part of that rotation, so 180 minus 90 would give us a leftover 90 degree angle here. So that's a right angle, so that was kind of a challenge problem. So if you if you weren't sure about that one, that's okay. I give you a challenge. All right. Um, so if you got that one right, good job. Now again, as we go along here, you're gonna learn more and more about these angle measures. So if you're having a little trouble, that's okay. Try number nine, and when you come back, we'll do it together. Okay, we're back. So this is an obtuse angle. Um, this is an acute angle. Its degree measure is less than 90. Here it's between uh, 90 and 180. This is a reflex angle. 
its measure is between 180 and 360 looks like this is about 270 degrees and this is a complete rotation angle so we got that one right good it's complete rotation because it's just a, a circle that signifies that uh, we're rotating completely until we get to the point where we started or the, the, the direction where we started so if you got that one right good job try number 10 when you come back we'll do it together okay we're back classify angle ABC so I'm gonna write those points negative 3 2 that's about there 0 6 that's about there and 1 negative 2 that's about there okay so this is point A this is point B and point C so B has to be uh, the vertex of the angle so that means we're dealing with this angle here and we're supposed to assume that this is not a a reflex angle so we're not talking about this angle back here we're talking about this angle here and if this were a right angle then it would look something like this that's 90 degrees but that orange is less than 90 degrees so it's going to be an acute angle so this is just one of the types of problems that you may see. So if you got that one right, excellent. Okay, so now we're going to learn something called the angle addition postulate. In the previous class, we learned the segment addition postulate. That's the situation where you have a segment and a point uh, somewhere in between the endpoints. The segment addition postulate tells us that the length of the segment is equal to the length of AC plus the length of CB. So that entire green length is equal to uh, the purple length plus the yellow length. That's the segment addition postulate. Now it's called a postulate because we just accept it to be true. It doesn't really require any explanation because it's a very very fundamental idea well we have a angle version of that it's called the angle addition postulate so if you have an angle this uh, angle represented by these yellow rays and you put a point in the interior of the angle then the uh, purple measure is equal to the green plus the red measure this angle measure is equal to this angle measure plus this angle measure so that's what it's saying this angle measure the uh, and that looks like it's about maybe 60 degrees maybe 65 degrees this angle here 65 degrees is equal to this angle which looks about 40 degrees plus this angle which is maybe about 25 degrees I don't know if that's the actual angle measure but but you get the point it's a very simple idea it's so simple that it's called a postulate we just accept it to be true and the the uh, the letter representation is up here so again these are just very basic ideas now let's do some practice so it says here find the measure of angle WXY so that's uh, let me get a different color pen that's this angle here that's WXY now we can assume that we're not talking about the reflex angle we're not talking about this angle out here and maybe I should uh, write that in the problem just so we know for sure we're not talking about the reflex but we want we want this angle measure here now we know from the angle addition postulate that the measure of angle WXY 
is equal to the measure of angle WXZ plus the measure of angle uh, ZXY. Now remember, there's, there's different ways to write those angles. So if you want to write it in a slightly different way, that's fine. Just make sure that X is the, uh, the vertex of all those angles. So that is the angle addition postulate. That tells us that uh, the measure of this angle plus the measure of this angle is equal to the measure of the entire angle. So we're looking for the measure of the entire angle, the measure of angle WXY, but we know that the measure of angle WXZ is 45 degrees. We can see that it's written on the paper and the other angle measure is 75 degrees, so we just add those up and we get 120 degrees. So again, you can see this is, this is very easy. All right, problem number two, and by the way, you can get a, a picture of this with your phone if you think that would be helpful to have that in front of you. You probably don't need it, you get the general idea. So we're told that the measure of angle ABC is 47 degrees. That's uh, this angle here. That angle measure is 47 degrees. And when they tell us to find the measure of angle DBC. So that is, that is this angle here. They want the measure of that angle. So we're going to use the angle addition postulate again. Uh, we know that the measure of angle ABC is equal to the measure of angle ABD plus the measure of angle DBC. So again what we're saying is the measure of this angle plus the measure of this angle is equal to the measure of the entire angle. Now they told us that the measure of the entire angle is 47 degrees. That's measure of angle ABC. And we know the measure of angle ABD is 4x plus 7. It says that in the diagram. And the measure of angle DBC is 10 plus 2x. So now we have an equation that we can use to find x. So 4x plus 2x is 6x and 7 plus 10 is 17. Subtract 17 from both sides, divide both sides by 6, and we see that x is equal to 5. So we can consider that to be step 1 of the problem. Step 1 was to find x. Now we need to uh, go on to the second step to find the measure of angle DBC. So the measure of angle DBC is equal to 10 plus 2x, but we know that x is 5. We just found that. Maybe I can bring this down a little bit. So then we just calculate and we get 20 degrees. So there you go. There was some algebra. There's not a lot of algebra in geometry, but there is some. So that's why beginning algebra is a prerequisite for this course. Okay, so now it's time for you to try. I want you to try 13. And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So we're going to use the angle addition postulate. The measure of angle WXY is equal to the measure of angle WXZ plus the measure of angle ZXY. Now again, your, your notation for these angles may be a little different. As long as the X is in the center of all these, then you'll be fine. Um, but you do, need, you do need to uh, designate these angles. Uh, they have to be in the proper place in the equation. You can't place the measure of angle WXY, you can't put that over here. 
and you can't put these on this uh, where this would be. So we know uh, we know the the measure of angle WXZ. It says right here, 50 degrees. And we know the measure of angle ZXY is 70 degrees. So we just add those up and we get 120 degrees. So again, I know this seems kind of easy. Uh, that was actually the same angle measure we got down here. That's just a coincidence. This seems kind of easy, but uh, again, we're starting out with the basics of geometry. So things are going to get more challenging as we go into the proof section, which is going to be uh, pretty soon. Okay, so now I want you to try number 14. You're going to use the angle addition postulate. Make sure you understand what that postulate tells us. And try number 14. When you come back, we'll do it together. So the angle addition postulate tells us that the measure of angle ABD is equal to the measure of angle ABC plus the measure of angle CBD. And we know ABC is 70 degrees. They told us that up here. And we know that angle CBD is 65 degrees. They told us that up here. And we're trying to find the measure of angle ABD. So we just add those up and we get 135 degrees. So if you got that one right, excellent. We didn't have to do any algebra for that problem. So I gave you a slightly easier problem on that one. Okay, so in the previous class we talked about the idea of congruence. And we applied that to segments. Uh, the word congruence means having the same size and shape. And uh, two segments that are considered to be congruent, they have the same length. But when it comes to angles, if two angles are congruent, then as you can imagine, that means the measures of the angles are equal. So for example, if you have an angle here that's congruent to an angle here, that means that their measures are the same. Their, their measures are both about 60 degrees. I didn't draw them exactly correct, but if, both their, their, uh, if their measures are both 60 degrees, and by definition, they're congruent angles. So for example, if angle ABC, and we, uh, I should have mentioned we use this symbol here. It's an equal s symbol with a squiggly mark on the top. That means congruent. We learned that in the previous class. So if angle ABC is congruent to angle DEF, then by definition, that means that their measures are equal. So the measure of angle ABC is equal to the measure of angle DEF. Okay, so now we're going to uh, apply that with this concept here. We're going to define something called an angle bisector. An angle bisector is a ray that divides an angle in half, such that the two resulting angles, this angle and this angle, are congruent. So this green measure here, this green measure here is equal to this green measure here. So this angle is congruent to this angle because their measures are equal. That's what an angle bisector is. It just cuts it in half. Now usually you can just write an arc to show that angles are, uh, uh, that the measures are the same, but I didn't want to confuse things, so I wrote a, a little uh, mark instead of an arc. I wrote, I wrote a, a tick mark there. That shows that those two angles are congruent. So you can get a picture of this stuff if you want. It's probably a good idea. Get a picture with your phone, and we're going to do some practice problems. If ray BD bisects angle ABC, find the measure of angle DBC. So this ray bisects this angle here, which means it cuts it in half. So this length is equal to this length. 
So you don't really even need to show any work to know the answer. Obviously, it's 40 degrees, right? But just to show that we're using that idea of an angle bisector, uh, we're going to write angle ABD. Angle ABD is congruent to angle uh, DBC. And that's just because we know that ray BD is a, bi is a bisector. It bisects angle ABC. Now, this is a verb. If you say uh, that ray BD is a bisector, then that's uh, using it as a noun. But bisect just means cut in half. By definition, that means that the measure of angle ABD is equal to the measure of angle DBC. Notice we're using an equal symbol and not a congruent symbol. That's because, remember, the measure of an angle is just a number, whereas this represents uh, more of a concept. OK, so now we know that the measure of angle ABD is 40 degrees, because we can see that in the picture. And then we have our answer. That's what we were looking for. So this is not really necessary to show on paper, but uh, it, it's not. It's not what I mean is it's not necessary to show that in order to figure out the answer. You probably figured out the answer in about two seconds, but this shows that you know how to find the answer. Um, okay, let's try number sixteen. If ray MA bisects angle LMN, find the measure of angle LMN. If this ray bisects this whole angle here, then by definition, that means that this angle is congruent to this angle. So we can write angle LMA is congruent to angle AMN. If that's true, then by definition, the measure of angle LM, LMA is equal to the measure of angle AMN. <clears throat> now we know the measure of angle LMA is 2x plus 30, and the measure of angle AMN is 40 plus x. So we're going to subtract x from both sides and subtract 30 from both sides, and we get x is equal to 10. So that was part one of the problem. Now we go on to part two. We need to find the measure of angle LMN is equal to the measure of angle LMA plus the measure of angle AMN. So that's the uh, angle addition postulate. So we're not only using the idea of uh, an angle bisector, but we're also uh, applying the angle addition postulate. So if you add those together, we have a 2x plus 30 plus 40 plus x. And we end up with uh, 3x plus 70. So now we go on to step uh, 3. That's where we actually find the measure of angle LMN by plugging in 10 to this expression over here. And we get 100 degrees. OK, so now it's time for you to try. I want you to try number 17. And when you come back, we'll do it together. OK, and now it's time for you to try. I want you to try number 17. Be aware that you're going to have to use the idea of an angle bisector, but you're also going to have to use the angle addition postulate, I believe. So try number 17. When you come back, we'll do it together. OK, we're back. I think I'm going to move this down as long as I have room. I'm going to move this problem up here. Sorry if you didn't have enough room there. All right, so ray BD bisects angle ABC. So 
we know this angle here must be 60 because this ray cuts in half and the total angle is 60 plus 60 which is 120 so you can do that pretty quickly in your head but to show the work we're going to say that angle uh, AB, ABD is congruent to angle uh, DBC. Make sure the Bs are in the middle. And that's, that's because we're told that ray BD bisects angle ABC. Now, by definition, if they're congruent, the angles are congruent, that means that the measures of the angles are equal. So we know that uh, angle CBD, this angle here, we can also call it DBC, that's 60 degrees. So that means we just found the measure of angle ABD. Now the reason that that's going to be useful is now we can say that the measure of angle uh, ABC, we know from the an angle addition postulate that the, the whole angle, the whole angle here, the whole angle measure is equal to the measure of angle ABD, this angle here, plus the measure of this angle here. That's angle CBD. Uh, maybe I should write it as DBC just so we don't get confused. DBC. It doesn't really matter as long as B is in the middle. So we're looking for this measure here. We know that the measure of angle ABD is 60 degrees because we just found that up here. And we know that the measure of this angle here, DBC, is 60 degrees because that's in the picture, that red writing. So we have 120 degrees. Now again, that's just showing you the work. Now I know what you're wondering. You're wondering, do you really have to show all that? Well, uh, it's good to, uh, to write the notation. We're not just learning the, the concepts, which are fairly easy, as you can see. We're also learning the notation. So it's probably best to write that, that uh, notation out. So now I want you to try number uh, 18. Try number 18. When you come back, we'll do it together. Okay, we're back. So this ray bisects this angle here, which means that this angle is congruent to this angle. And by definition, that means their measures are equal. So angle LMA is congruent to angle AMN. And by definition, if they're congruent, that just means that their measures are equal. And uh, we know that the measure of LMA, angle LMA, is 5x plus 17 because it says that in the picture. And the measure of angle AMN is 7x plus 3 because it says that in the picture. If we solve that equation, subtract 5x from both sides, subtract 3 from both sides, divide both sides by 2, we get x is equal to 7. So that was step one of the problem, is to find x. But now it wants us to find the measure of angle AMN. So we know that the measure of angle AMN is 7x plus 3, but we know x is 7. So 49 plus 3 is 52. So 52 degrees. Make sure to write your degree symbol, because we're writing angle measure. So if you got that one right, excellent. Good job. OK, now we're going to talk about uh, some special angle pairs. Uh, that means two angles grouped together. We're going to group two angles and classify them. Adjacent angles are angles that share a vertex, in this case D is the common uh, vertex. We have the yellow angle and the, uh, the green angle, and they share D. That's a common vertex. And they also share a side. Ray DB is a side that they share. 
Those are called adjacent angles. You need those two characteristics in order to be classified as adjacent angles. So here are some examples of non-adjacent angles. These two angles are non-adjacent because they don't share a common vertex. They have This angle has E as its vertex, and this angle has F as its vertex. They're different points. And they don't share a, a, a common side either. This side is at ray FB, and this side is ray ED. On the other hand, considering the angles at the right, the yellow angle and the green angle do share a vertex, but they don't share a side. So if these two rays were on top of each other, then the angles would share a side, but they're not. Um, there's a separation in between. Okay, so let's uh, try some practice problems. This problem says identify three pairs of angles in the illustration that are adjacent. So adjacent means they have the same vertex and they share a side. So I'm going to try, or I'm going to I'm going to mention angle ABC and angle CBE. They share the vertex B and they share the side uh, BC. So angle ABC. and angle CBE. There's actually a lot of options in this in this uh, picture when it comes to adjacent angles. I'm now going to say angle ABC and angle ABD. And the last one I can say angle uh, CBE and angle DBE. So those were some possible options. Um, let me rectangle that and on to the next problem, or the next part of the problem. It says here identify two pairs of angles in the illustration that are non-adjacent. So if I represent this angle with the purple and this angle with yellow, those are non-adjacent. Non and the reason they're non-adjacent is they don't share a side. You have this these red gaps in between them, so they don't share. For example, BC is not a shared side. It, it's a side that the purple angle has, but not the yellow angle. So angle ABC and angle DBE are non-adjacent. And we can also say that uh, this green angle and uh, this red angle are non-adjacent. They don't share a side. So angle ABD and angle CBE. So those are two pairs of angles that are non-adjacent. All right, we're going to hold off on part C for now. So you can take a picture with your phone and use that picture to help you with number 20. Go ahead and try number 20. When you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're, ba we're back. Identify three pairs of angles in the illustration that are adjacent. So we can use angle uh, a, E, C, and angle uh, A, E, B, or we could say angle A, E, B, and uh, angle B, E, D. Um, and let's see what else can we can we find um, let's try angle CED and angle AEC and that's all we need so you may have a a different grouping but remember for example, AEB and BED 
they're adjacent because they share the same vertex E and they share the side EB. So that's uh, adjacent angles. So if you didn't have the exact answers, that doesn't, the exact answers I had, that doesn't mean that you, it was wrong. Okay, part B, identify two pairs of angles in the illustration that are non-adjacent. So this red angle and this yellow angle are non-adjacent because they don't share a side. They don't share a side here. They don't share a side here. They don't share a side here or here. There's a, there's a gap in between them. So a gap, so to speak. So angle AEB, that's angle AEB and angle uh, CED. Those are examples of uh, non-adjacent angles. But we can also say angle AEC and angle BED. So if you got those answers, excellent. Those are actually the only two options for uh, non-adjacent angles in that particular picture. Okay, now let's move on to complementary angles. Um, complementary angles are two angles whose measures add up to 90 degrees. So these are complementary angles because 60 degrees plus 30 degrees is 90 degrees. So they're complementary. If you spell complement with an I, that means uh, give somebody a compliment, nice t-shirt. But if you spell compliment with an E, that means you make something better by adding something to it. For example, you might say uh, the rose garden in front of your house complements the house. It makes it look better. So these two angles complement each other they, because they add up to a special angle. Um, Here's two angles that are also complementary, even though they're, they're not non-adjacent, as you see here, because they add up to 90 degrees. Supplementary angles are angles whose measures add up to 180 degrees. So here's some examples. 130 degrees plus 150 is 180, so these are complementary angles but they don't have to be separated. They can also be adjacent. If you put them together and make them adjacent angles, then they're still uh, supplementary. So let's do some practice. It says here, if two angles are complementary and one of the angles is 75 degrees, what is the measure of the other angle? So this may seem kind of easy, but we know that the, me the, the measure of one angle plus the measure of the other angle is 180 degrees because, whoops, actually be, that should be 90. 90 degrees because it says they're complementary. We know one of the angles is 75 degrees, and by the way, I just chose A and B. You can choose really whatever you want. So subtract 75, and we find the measure of the other angle, which is, uh, that would be 15 degrees. So the answer is 15 degrees. You don't have to call it angle B, but that's just how you do that type of problem. And by the way, if you want to take a picture with your phone of the definition of complementary and supplementary angles, you can do that. So now we're told that the angles are supplementary. So what that means is the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B is equal to uh, 180 degrees. But we're told that the measure of angle A is X minus 5 and the measure of angle B is X over two. And we're told to find the measure of angle B, but we can't do that unless we have X. Well, we can use this equation to find X. So one X plus one half X is three halves X. You might say, well, that's one and one half X. Well, in algebra, we don't use mixed numbers. So we added those x's together. Then we're going to add 5 to both sides of the equation. 
and you can do this in two steps or one step, uh, but you want to, you can either multiply both sides by two thirds, or you can multiply by two and then divide by three, however you want to do it. So if I do that in my calculator, I get 123.3 bar. So x is equal to 123.3 bar. That was step one of the problem, is to find x. Now we go on to step two. We need to find the measure of angle B. The measure of angle B is equal to uh, x over 2, but we know x is 123.3 bar. So we just take that number in our calculator, divide by 2, and we see that the measure is 61.6 .6 bar degrees. Sorry about the weird numbers there. So again, you can take a picture of these problems with your phone if you'd like. Numbers 21 and 22 are going to help you. And I want you to try number 23. And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. If two angles are supplementary and one of the angles is 60 degrees, what is the measure of the other angle? Well, again, if they're supplementary, then that means the measures add up to 180. We know one angle is 60, so you really don't even need to show the work here. Subtract 60, and we get uh, 120 degrees, so that is the answer. The other angle is 120 degrees. If you got that right, excellent. Try number 24. When you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. We're told that these angles are complementary, so they add up to 90 degrees. We're told that one angle is 2x minus 1, uh, one, one of the angle measures, and the other angle measures is x plus 5, and we can use that information to help us find x. Subtract 4 from both sides, and we get 3, 3x is equal to 86. And divide both sides by 3, and we get, um, let's move this over a little bit. And this is step 1 of the problem. So we get x is equal to 28.6 bar. So now we move on to step 2 of the problem. Now we're going to find the measure of angle A. So we just plug in that x value that we just found and do the math. So multiply 28.6 bar by 2 and subtract 1. And you can do this with a calculator. That's completely fine. We get 56.3 bar degrees. Alright, so if you got that one right, good. Now we're going to do a little challenge problem. So this is a problem that typically causes a lot of uh, anxiety with students, but it's, it's really not that difficult. We're told that uh, the measure of an angle is 40 degrees less than the measure of its supplement. So let's say you have an angle that is uh, 20 degrees. The supplement of that angle would be a 160 degree angle because they add up to 180. Remember, supplementary angles are angles that add up to 180. Now, if you have an angle that is 40 degrees, for example, the complement would be 50 degrees because now they're complementary angles. So that's what it means to uh, be a, uh, a supplement. Um, or a complement. So what this means is that we have two angles that add up to 180 degrees because again it says one angle is the supplement of the other angle. Now we know that one of the angles, one of the angle measures is 40 degrees less than the measure of its supplement. And its supplement is, is uh, is uh, angle B. So we have two equations 
and we can put them together and make a system of equations. Now, in the previous course, we solved system of equations, but it's been a while since we did that. So if you're a little rusty on this, that's okay. If you've never seen a system of equations before, then that probably means that you haven't uh, uh, taken a beginning algebra course that uh, had the right material in it. You can go to my beginning algebra course and learn systems of equations, but basically what we're going to do to solve this is we're going to take this top equation and we're going to rewrite it. But instead of measure of angle A, I'm going to plug in what the bottom equation tells us measure of angle A is equal to. All right, so I took uh, this here. Well, let me just say I, I took this here and plugged it in there. Okay, so now we're just going to simplify that equation. Measure of angle B plus measure of angle B is two measure of angle Bs. And then I'm going to add 40 to both sides and we get two times the measure of angle B is equal to 220 and divide both sides by two and we get measure of angle B is equal to 110 degrees. Um, the problem is we're not looking for that that angle we're looking for the original angle which is measure of angle A. So measure of angle A is equal to, we can use this equation, measure of angle B, which is 110 degrees, minus 40 degrees, which is 70 degrees. So now if we add these two purple angles, we see we get 180 degrees. That, that tells us that we probably did the problem correctly because again, these angles have to be supplementary. So again, that problem is a little intimidating but uh, you know, don't worry too much if you can't do that problem or if you get stuck. A lot of students have trouble with that type of problem. But try number 26. You can use 25 to help you. Uh, this time the angles are complementary because it says one angle is the complement of the other angle. So they have to add up to 90 degrees. So you want to start with this equation here, but instead of 180, you're going to write uh, 90 degrees. Try number 26, and when you come back, we'll do it together. Okay, we're back. So again, we know that the angles are complementary. So we can write this equation here. And we're told that uh, the measure of one angle is 10 degrees more than 19 times uh, the measure of its complement. So now what we're going to do is pretend that this is a system of equations. Well, it is a system of equations. We're going to rewrite that top equation. But instead of measure of angle A, we're going to write what the bottom equation tells us that measure of angle A is equal to. So I took that and threw it in there. So now we have 10 plus uh, 19 measure of angle B plus 1 measure of angle B is 20 measure of angle B's. Subtract 10 from both sides. Divide both sides by 20 and we get the measure of angle B is equal to 4 degrees. That's a pretty small uh, angle. So that was step 1 of the problem. We're actually looking for the measure of angle A. So the measure of angle A is equal to 10 plus 19 times 4 degrees. So I got that equation from here. And by the way, you could just subtract 4 from 90 to get the final answer but we're just uh, using our system here showing how everything works. If you do the math there, you get 
86 degrees. So the measure of angle A is 86 degrees. That's the final answer. Okay, so if you got that right, good job. That was a challenge problem. Okay, now we're going to talk about angles that uh, form a linear pair. A linear pair is two adjacent angles whose non-common sides are opposite rays. So we actually talked about this. So you have the red angle and the blue angle. They share a side and they share a vertex, which means that they are adjacent. So the blue angle and the red angle are adjacent angles, but their non-common sides are opposite rays, meaning they go in the opposite direction. So the blue angle and the red angle together form a linear pair because their non-common sides uh, form a line. Now, we have something called the linear pair postulate, which says that if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. Well, what does supplementary mean? Remember, supplementary means that they, uh, their, their angle measures add up to 180 degrees. But that makes sense. The red angle uh, and the blue angle, their measures have to add up to 180. Because remember, a complete rotation is 360 degrees, which means that a half rotation represented by the semicircle arc would be 180 degrees. Now, technically, this should probably be called a theorem because that does require some proof. But the proof is kind of long, so there are some... Uh, textbooks that just call it a postulate to make things easier and that's what I'm going to do because I'm not going to require you to to uh, uh, show a long proof every time you want to use that concept but uh, it really doesn't matter that much if you call it a theorem or a postulate in this case I just choose to call it a postulate I know that's kind of weird there is a difference between a theorem and a postulate but uh, to make things easier we're just going to call it a postulate so let's use that uh, all right, it says find the measure of angle ABD. So that's the measure of this angle here. We actually did a problem that kind of touched on this. Um, these two angles, this angle here and this angle here, they form a linear pair. Now, how do I know that? Well, because their non-common sides are opposite rays. They're going the opposite direction. So we know from the linear pair postulate that this angle and this angle are supplementary. So that means that uh, the measure of angle ABD plus the measure of angle DBC has to be 180 degrees. And we know the measure of angle uh, DBC is 90. How do we know that? because we have this box here. That means it's a 90 degree angle measure and we're trying to find the measure of angle ABD. So just subtract 90 from both sides and we find the measure of angle ABD is 90 degrees. So pretty easy. Okay, let's do number 28. Uh, find X. Again, we have an angle here and an angle here, and they form a linear pair because the non-common sides are opposite rays. This side and this side, they're opposite rays. And really all that means is that they form uh, a, a line. So that's a 180 degree arc. So the linear pair postulate tells us that if those angles form a linear pair, then that means they're supplementary. And if they're supplementary, by definition, that means that their angle measures add up to 180 degrees. So I'm going to move that over. So again, this is what it means for angles to be uh, supplementary. And we know that the measure of angle LPS is 7x plus 8, because they tell us that in the picture. And the measure of angle SPB is 32 degrees. They tell us that in the, uh, the picture. Now we're going to add 8 and 32 to get 40. And 
I'm going to subtract 40 from both sides and divide both sides by 7, and we get x is equal to 20. And that's it. That's all we're trying to find is x in this particular problem. So I want you to try number 29. And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So we see that these two angles form a linear pair, which means that they're supplementary. The measure of their angles, uh, the measures of their angles add up to 180 degrees. Uh, the measure of angle SPB is 100 degrees. It tells us that in the picture. And we just subtract 100, and we find that the measure of angle LPS is equal to 80 degrees. So if you got that one right, excellent. Go ahead and try number 30. And when you come back, we'll do it together. Okay, we're back. So this angle and this angle form a linear pair because their, their non-common sides are opposite rays. So that means uh, that the measure of angle ABD plus the measure of angle DBC has to be 180 degrees by the uh, linear pair postulate. The linear pair postulate tells us that they're supplementary angles, which means that their measures add up to 180 degrees. We know that the measure of angle DBC is 40 minus 2x, and we know the measure of angle ABD is 90 degrees. Well, how do we know that? Well, because we, have, we see this box here. So now we add up 90 and, and 40, and we get 130. And we subtract 130 from both sides, and we get 50. Divide both sides by negative 2, and we get x is equal to negative 25. So there you go. If you got that one right, excellent. OK, now we're going to move on to uh, one more concept here, vertical angles. What are vertical angles? If you draw two lines so that they intersect, uh, vertical angles are created. Vertical angles are two angles whose sides form two pairs of opposite rays. You've got the green opposite rays and the purple opposite rays. Now, in words that we can understand, vertical angles are created when you have two lines that intersect. You can think of it that way. That's the easiest way to uh, consider vertical angles. Now, we have a theorem called the vertical angles theorem. This is actually our first theorem that we're learning. Remember, a theorem has to be proven. Now, we're not going to show the proof for this in this class, but we may go over it uh, when we cover proofs in uh, a week or so. Um, but uh, you would definitely have to show why this is true. If you really wanted to uh, prove that this is true, you'd have to uh, give it uh, an explanation with uh, you know definitions and uh, uh, postulates and possibly theorems, so on and so forth. Uh, so we're going to use the vertical angles theorem. It says here, find the measure of angle ABD. So that's this yellow angle down here. Well, we know that angle has to be 120 degrees. We know that the yellow angle and the green angle are vertical angles, we can see, because they're lines that cross each other. So that means the yellow angle must uh, be congruent to the green angle, which means that they have the same measure. So the yellow angle, is a, uh, its measure is 120 degrees. So angle. EBC is congruent to angle ABD. And how do we know that? The vertical angles theorem. That means that their measures are equal. But if their measures are equal, and we know that the measure of angle EBC is 120, we know that from the, from the picture, then we have our answer. Now again, I know that's a lot to write. We probably could have just figured that out just by looking at the picture, but we're showing our work. 
Okay, let's try one more of these before you try one on your own. So it says find x. We have vertical angles because the lines intersect. And uh, the red angles are vertical. They're across from each other. You can call them opposite angles if you'd like. Angle AEC, therefore, must be congruent to angle uh, DEB. Now, why is that? Well, it's because the vertical angles theorem. Vertical angles are congruent. So, by definition, if they're congruent, that means that the measures of the angles are equal. And uh, we know the measure of angle AEC is 9x plus 28 because they tell us that in the picture. And the measure of angle DEB is negative 4x plus 132. If we add 4x to both sides, we get 13x on the left side, subtract 28 from both sides, and we get 104. And if we divide both sides of the equation by 13, then we get 8. So we found x. That's part A of the problem. Now we'll go on to part B. Part B says to find the measure of angle DEB. But we know that the measure of angle DEB is negative 4 times x. We know x is 8 now because we found that, that value. And so now we have negative 32 plus 132, which is 100. So the measure of angle DEB is 100 degrees. OK, so go ahead and take a picture of these problems with your phone. And I want you to try number 33. And when you come back, we'll do it together. OK, we're back. So obviously, the answer is going to be 150 degrees. Because we know, by the vertical angles theorem, that angle uh, ZYL is congruent to angle XYB. That's the vertical angles theorem because those are vertical angles. We can see that the lines cross each other and make vertical angles. So the measures must be equal. That's the definition of congruence. And we know the measure of angle XYB is 150 degrees because it tells us that in the picture. So the measure of angle ZYL, which is what we're looking for, is 150 degrees. So if you got that right, excellent. So try number 34. And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So those are vertical angles. So angle ABC must be congruent to angle EBD. And we know that because of the vertical angles theorem. But if they're congruent, by definition, that means that their measures are equal. And we know the measure of angle ABC is 11x plus 45. And the measure of angle EBD is 30x minus 50. Subtract 11x from both sides, and we get 19x. Add 50 to both sides, and we get uh, 95. So if we divide both sides by 19, we get 5. So we found x. x is equal to 5. Now let's go on to part b of the problem. It says find the measure of angle EBD. So the measure of angle EBD is equal to 30 times x, but we found x is 5, minus 50. So 5 times 30 is 150. 150 minus 50 is 100 degrees. So there you go. It ended up being the same angle measure that we had in uh, problem number 32. So if you got that one right, excellent. Now if you'd like to take screenshots of all the work that we did today to help you with your homework or to study for tests, go ahead and do that now.
Here's screenshot number one. And screenshot number two. And screenshot number three. And number four. And number five. And number six. And number seven. And number eight. But don't go before you get your homework. Remember, each video has a homework assignment. If you don't do this homework, it's a 100% guarantee you're going to learn absolutely nothing in the entire course. So here's the first screenshot. Take a picture of that or a screenshot with your computer. And here's the second screenshot. And the third screenshot. Now again, the answers are written in these boxes here. And you might say, well, I can just write the answer. But many of these problems require you to show work. So some of them you can just write the answers. But when it comes to problems like this, for example, you need to show your work. This is an algebra problem. And this problem. And uh, this problem and this problem. So you need to show the work. You can't just write the answer. So even if you see the answer, it doesn't mean that you can necessarily do the problem. You have to show how you got to that answer. And of course you can just cover these boxes with a piece of paper if you would uh, prefer not to see the answer before you do the problem. So get that homework done and I look forward to seeing you in the next class.